This video is sponsored by Musicbed. I've been making videos since I was a small kid. At the age of 12, I picked up my first camera and started shooting all kinds of things. Scooter tricks, bike jumps, bank robberies, animals, action movies, whatever came to my mind. I simply enjoyed capturing interesting things and it quickly became my favorite thing to do. After school, I met up with friends to film and in the evening, I watched YouTube videos until late at night in order to learn how to use an editing software. Looking back at all of these old videos, I never would have imagined that one day this hobby would turn into my full-time job. I mean, look at this. My videos straight up sucked and our bike tricks sucked as well. Oh my gosh! <laughs> But still, I was dedicated enough to push through and pick up my camera every single day for more than 10 years. I never could have imagined what people I would meet, places I would travel and stories I would tell by pursuing a career in filmmaking. Over those last years, I learned so much about improving my skills, building up a portfolio, connecting with the right people and presenting my qualities to companies that I was able to land big budget projects for world-known brands and build up an amazing community of now more than 100,000 people on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for tagging along on my journey. Your support is beyond anything I ever imagined. Many of you guys send me messages where you say that you like filmmaking and would love to make it your job, but that you are struggling to see a path to follow in order to make it happen. I can 100% relate to this because back then I was in the exact same situation in which I didn't know where to start. How can I become better at making videos? Should I go to film school? How can I make brands notice my work? How can I actually make money from this? I know exactly what you feel like. And in this video, I want to answer those questions by sharing my six most valuable insights and learnings on becoming a full-time filmmaker. So, before anybody's willing to pay for your work as a filmmaker, you have to become really, really good at creating videos, which means you have to become good at scripting, shooting, and editing videos. And I found the quickest way to learn new skills as a filmmaker is by watching videos. I myself actually learned everything I know about filmmaking from watching YouTube tutorials. I've been watching tutorials for hours every single evening back in the days, and I mostly did it because I didn't want to spend any money on online courses. But nowadays, my perception of online courses definitely changed and I think it is 100% worth it to spend a couple of hundred dollars for an online course because the structure of these courses is very streamlined and they are made for beginners to build up their skills gradually. So you're going to start with the basic skills and you're going to build up until you get to the very advanced topics. While on YouTube you have to search for every single topic manually. So basically you just save a lot of time and also most of these courses are made by people who are very, very skilled in the filmmaking industry. Moment, full-time filmmaker, Skillshare and Masterclass are good places to look for online courses. You can find links to them in the description. But only learning isn't enough to become good as a filmmaker. You have to learn, make and repeat. This is the cycle that you really have to like remember in your mind and that you always have to come back to because only theory is not going to get you far because as a filmmaker, you have to 
get all of these practical skills. You have to hold your camera, you have to know the movements, you have to interact with other people and you have to shoot in specific environments to actually know how to use your camera in specific situations. So that's why you have to bring all of these things that you learned in these online courses or YouTube videos into action by actually practicing. So yeah, I think that it is really important to find a good balance between theory and practice um, because only one of them won't bring you far. You have to learn, make and repeat and you have to kind of stick to this cycle for your whole career. I'm still doing this today. I'm still throwing myself into new situations and I'm learning a ton of new things. It's just a general mindset that you have to adapt with every new person and every new situation. You can learn new things. You have to be hungry to learn new skills and then you will improve very, very quickly. My second tip is to build up a network. Especially in the creative industry, it is very important to know the right people in order to land client projects. And also it's always good to have a network of other skilled filmmakers with who you can always collaborate if they need help on their projects or if you need a second hand on your project. Just look for other filmmakers who are at the same stage when it comes to their skills as you are. If you just learned the camera basics, you can't expect that uh, another person who shoots client projects every day is going to meet up with you because they're busy. Um, but just look for other people who create something similar and just ask them on Instagram or via email if they want to meet up, if they want to go out and shoot, if they just want to hang out, if you can help them on their projects, if they want to help on your projects. Just try to meet up with other filmmakers and build up those different relationships because everybody's going to get better and you never know in a couple of years where these people are going to be. So it's always worth it to, to just reach out to other people and to connect with other creatives. All in all, it's just extremely important that you are a team player in the world of filmmaking because on almost every project, you're going to work together with other people and there are only benefits if you connect with other creatives. You can learn from each other because chances are really high that they have a different workflow to yours and that they know something else that you don't. Also, you can can help each other on your projects and you get some inspiration by meeting up with other people and just sharing different ideas and maybe one day they're even going to call you if they need help on a client project or they're going to recommend you to another person because they can't do the project themselves and um, which is something that I started to do a lot because I wanted to do more YouTube videos I'm starting to recommend some of my other friends that helped me throughout the last years um, to give them some projects so yeah, it's always really important to build up a network and it's also just fun to meet up with other people who have the same passion. Come on now. <laughs> tip number three, which is not really a tip, but it's more of a question. Should you go to film school? That's one of the questions that I asked myself over and over again back then. It made me kind of crazy because all of my friends, they went to university and also in my family, there was nobody who kind of pursued a career in the creative industry. So I thought, yeah, I, I really have to get a degree in order to make money from filmmaking. But over the last couple of years, I definitely found out that it's not necessary to have a degree in order to land big client projects and to make a good living as a filmmaker. I think that you just have to define for yourself what type of filmmaking you want to do in the future. Because for me, there are two different types of filmmaking nowadays. The first one is traditional filmmaking. So that would be huge sets with a lot of people and every single person has a specific task that they have to do. So there's going to be a producer, a director, a director of photography, an assistant, a makeup artist, somebody who's taking care of lighting, just so many different people. And everybody is a specialist in his specific area but they all follow kind of a hierarchy. So this traditional filmmaking takes place at huge film sets for cinema movies or big commercials. And also if you want to go to Hollywood, that would be traditional filmmaking. And on the other side, as a second one, there is modern filmmaking, which is filmmaking that kind of evolved over the last 10, 20 years, mostly because of social media, because companies need to have all kinds of different videos and photos in order to fill their social media channels. And they can't afford huge production crews like the ones I mentioned. So that's why today we have a new era of filmmakers and a lot of people call this profession content creators. So that basically means that there is not a specialist in every single topic like lighting, shooting and editing, but that one person is doing all of them. I like this modern type of filmmaking a lot more because I have control over all of the different steps within the process of creating a film. So I think you really have to figure out for yourself if you like this 
traditional filmmaking or this modern filmmaking and then you can decide if you should go to film school or not. So if you choose traditional filmmaking it can definitely make sense to go to film school because you have access to a lot of knowledge in one specific topic like for example directing or camera or script writing and also you learn all of the rules that you have to follow on set. But on the other side if you want to have access to knowledge in all the different topics then I think it's better to not go to film school and to just stick to online courses and to practical knowledge by doing internships and learning from other people. Which brings us to the next tip. So as I figured out that film school was not for me, I decided to take a different approach to gain some experience in the filmmaking industry. And that approach was to learn from the best. I wanted to learn from the best filmmakers and the best production companies in the game and that's why I reached out to them and asked them if I can work for them as an assistant, if I can do an internship or if I can just work for free in order to get some knowledge. And I knew that it wouldn't be easy to reach these people and actually get them to meet up with me because I mean who was I? I I didn't create any good videos at that point. That's why I got a little bit more creative than just sending over my CV and applying for a job. I created a two minute video where I was just explaining to those people that I really admire their work and that I would love to work for them for free in order to get some more knowledge. I was looking for a mentor in some way. Yeah, I just showed those people that I love their work and I also showed them a couple of examples of the work I already did at that point, which were some landscape photos and my first cinematic video that I shot together with my brother on my Mallorca. And even though I had the worst hairstyle in the whole world, <laughs> some of those people replied to me and they said, okay, sure, let's meet up. Yeah, come for the next project and you can be my helping hand and, and charge my batteries. And that's what I did. I met up with Ray Dembski, who is like one of the best commercial photographers uh, when it comes to sports and action stuff. And um, I also met up with some other people. And just by like accompanying these people on some of their projects and just helping them out, that's like one of the quickest ways you can learn because those people they have decades of experience and just by like observing their workflow you learn so many things that you can't really get through online courses or anything else. So I met up with a lot of people and also I landed two internships in production companies. One was a design agency where I learned a lot about motion design and editing in Premiere Pro and After Effects. The other one was a film production company and there I also really learned to kind of like interact with the client and that kind of stuff. So I think that it's a really good approach to just look for the best people in your industry to just reach out to them in a creative way. Those people are really busy so make sure to grab their attention. You have to be creative, you have to do something upfront in order to show them how you can add value to them and how passionate you are about what you're doing. Because those people they were in the same situation before and maybe if somebody really likes what you do they will also be happy to mentor you and like quickly accelerate your career by by getting you on more projects and sharing a lot of information with you. So yeah, definitely makes sense to, to learn from the best and to reach out to those people. Before we go to the next tip, I quickly wanted to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Musicbed. I've previously used Artlist as my main music platform on most of my projects, but around five months ago, I started to use Musicbed as well, and I have to say that I'm simply amazed by the quality of music they offer. So many music licensing platforms give you access to royalty-free music, which is music that is mainly produced to sell licenses. But on Musicbed they have a rights managed catalog, which means that they give you access to songs of record label quality artists that are touring the world and that can even be heard on the radio. I'm sure that many of you have already seen my year 2020 video. It's definitely one of my favorite videos that I ever created. If you haven't checked it out already, you can check it out here. And every single song in this video was actually from Musicbed, which kind of made it feel like a real movie. We can take this outside, outside hey. Looking at the stars staring in my mouth wide yeah. I ain't letting nobody right. stop me this time nah. Every single level that I reach in that cloud They ask how you Probably my favorite things about Musicbed are first of all the quality of music. There is just some stuff on there that you can't find on any other music licensing platforms. Secondly, the design of their platform. It's beautiful, it's simple and it's very easy to find new songs with their different filters and their well curated playlists. And third point, you don't have any trouble with copyright claims on YouTube. Even though it's not royalty free music, those copyright claims will get cleared automatically and uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about this. When it comes to their pricing, you can get an individual subscription 
subscription for $19.99 per month and that lets you use their music for your personal projects and also your social media channels. And for $99.99 you can get a business subscription that lets you use those songs for your client projects up to 250 employees. That may sound like a lot of money but if you charge music licenses to your client which I always do and then you have the costs covered in no time. If you want to sign up you can find a link in the description and if you use my coupon code Nicholas at checkout you will get the first month for free if you sign up for an annual individual subscription. Thanks to Musicbed for sponsoring this video and now we're going to hop over to the next tip. Our big advantage as filmmakers or as creatives in general is to directly show the quality of our work without the need of degrees or certificates. For example, in finances, people can only tell how good you are at your job by looking at the university where you studied, the different degrees you have, the companies you worked for or the feedback of your former employees. While in filmmaking, people can just look at your videos and they can directly tell how good you are. So basically our skills are directly attached to the work we put out into the world and it will determine whether or not a client is going to pay for your work or whether or not a person you look up to is going to meet up with you. And for that reason it's super important to create a good portfolio which is basically just an overview of all of the projects and all of the work you already did showcasing just what you're capable of. I think it definitely makes sense to first think about what kind of work you would like to do if you would like to shoot cars, if you would like to shoot fashion or if you would would like to do some films about sports. I think it's really important to think about this before you start creating different videos that you put in your portfolio because people are only going to hire you for the videos you already created because they want to have the assurance that you are able of creating this type of video. Especially in the beginning when you don't have any big client projects that you can showcase it makes sense to create something called spec ads. So a spec ad is basically a commercial that you would like to shoot in the future. You just create a a specific piece to show people that you can do it. For example, you gather with some of the other filmmakers you know and you create the most epic car commercial that you can do and maybe then Ferrari is going to reach out to you and say, okay, I want one of those as well. This thing always turns off. Define for yourself what kind of projects you'd like to do, do projects in a similar direction and build up a good portfolio. In order to get people to pay for your work, you have to put yourself to market in as many ways as possible. And I think that there are three ways to get clients to hire you for your work. Your website, social media and word of mouth. I think it makes sense to create a website right from the start as soon as you have something that you can showcase to a potential customer just put it on your website because that's a nice way to showcase your portfolio to other people. I think it's also very important to showcase your work on social media not only if you want to be a YouTuber but also if you're looking for clients because a lot of potential customers are looking for creators on these platforms. I think that Instagram, Vimeo and YouTube kind of became the modern day portfolio to showcase your work and yeah for good reason. You have exposure to new people, you can grow your accounts and also on top of that you're just more present in the minds of other people. So if somebody else needs a filmmaker and he sees okay this guy is posting continuously good work on his social media account then maybe he's going to reach out and maybe he has a project for you. So your website and your social media accounts allow you to give people a very quick access to your portfolio and I think that it also makes sense to get yourself business cards. This is kind of old school I feel but I think it's just super useful because you can just give people your card and then they have instant access to your portfolio by going on your website or your social media channels and also they have a way to contact you. I for example on my business card have like my email address, my phone number and I also have a barcode. If you scan this then you can immediately add me to your contacts which I think is a super nice way to quickly connect with other people. So yeah I think that's really useful. Whew. And word of mouth basically means that another person who likes your work recommends you to a potential client in person. And yeah, that actually happens a lot. And I think in general, you should always just be kind to everyone you meet. Like that's just a general mindset that I think every person in this world should have. And you don't even know how much this will give you back. Like if you're just kind and polite to other people, then those people will like to work with you again. And those people will recommend you to other people. So I think, yeah, this is, this is pretty easy to do. Just be kind to other people and those will be happy to recommend you to others. 
that's about it guys. These were my six tips on how to become a full-time filmmaker. I feel like I already did my first online course here, but I just wanted to provide you guys with as many valuable tips as possible because I was once in the same situation where I was creating crappy videos and I didn't know where to start. And hopefully some of these tips help you to also pursue a career in filmmaking. I can 100% tell you that if you work hard and if you push through and if you follow these steps, you are also going to be able to make a living from filmmaking and following your passion. So yeah, I hope it was helpful. And if you guys don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos, definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel and also to turn on your notifications. And if you're looking for more videos on filmmaking, you can also find a filmmaking playlist in the video description. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for 100k subscribers. Still can't really believe it. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.